हेलो टीम वेलकम टू माई सेशन ऑन कॉफी विद प्रब एंड टूडे वी गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट डोमेन फॉर एग्जाम समरी डोमेन फॉर विच डोमेन सी आई एस एस पी डोमेन फॉर एग्जाम समरी विच इज अ कम्युनिकेशन एंड नेटवर्क सिक्योरिटी आई नो सम नॉन टेक्निकल एस्पिरेंट फॉर दैम दिस डोमेन इज वेरी पेनफुल डोमेन फोर एंड डोमेन थ्री आई ऑलरेडी मेड द माइंड मैप द एग्जाम समरी ऑफ डोमेन वन डोमेन टू डोमेन थ्री इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स सो डोमेन फोर इज ऑल्सो अ वेरी हाई लेवल समरी आई एम गोइंग टू कवर Who am I? My name is Prab Nair, and for more information, you can refer my LinkedIn profile. And if you are new to this channel, do subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss my any new video. So, this video I will highly recommend for those aspirants who have not started reading from the book, no matter whether it is a CIBEX or whether it is a CBK. because if you review this video before reading the domain 4 you get a visibility what you need to read and what you need to ignore so let's start with the first part in domain 4 the domain 4 basically start with osi model in osi model we have a seven layers layer 1 is a physical layer layer 7 is a application layer so you must be have a good understanding of the functionality of the each and every layer need to remember that hub repeater works on physical layer and circuit level proxy work on the session layer okay along with that you need to know about the encryptions which is happening in all the layers you need to know the devices and attacks which is happening on each and every layer one exam point and one suggestion i can give you like smurf attack smurf attack is basically occurs on on network layer where a fraggle attack happen on the transport layer okay so it is very important for you to know about the attack types of different layer and functionality of each layer so we have a seven layers and uh, after that we also have a tcp ip model which talk about their respective layers so you need to know a good understanding of the tcp ip which having a four layer of osi model a four layer of the tcp ip model so that is also very important for you to understand along with that uh you need to have a very good understanding of the firewall architecture okay dmz what kind of a host we can able to place in dmz one important point is like dns email server web server mostly we keep in the dmz and database active directory and all those things we basically keep in the internal network dmz is basically a zone which provide the protection of my internal network from external network we also keep bastion host in the dmz so you need to have a very good understanding of the firewall placement you need to know uh, about the placement of the firewall example ips should come before firewall or after the firewall you need to understand you know as a security consultant because cssp teach you about how to how to think like an advisor right so as an advisor you are recommending the solutions right the placement before the firewall after the firewall router placement before router so until unless you don't have a idea how can you recommend not at all you don't need to know in detail about the firewall configuration you don't need to know the detail configuration of a router and all that and all that no but you should know which device comes on which layer the placement of the device because you are act like a consultant okay so it's very important for you to understand the different type of firewall architecture then we move ahead to talk about the firewall types so in the firewall type the first thing what we have is the stateless firewall which is called as a packet filtering firewall which works on the layer 3 of the osi model then we talk about the second generation firewall which is called as a application level proxy and circuit level proxy one thing is that application level proxy it slow down the process because it do the deep packet inspection where the circuit level proxy is just check the session so circuit level proxy work on the layer 6 of the osi model which is a session layer and uh, sorry this one fifth layer of the osi model which is a session layer and uh, application level proxy work on the application layer of the osi model then we have a third generation firewall which is a stateful firewall which maintain the state which work on the layer 4 of the osi model so you need to know the advantage and disadvantage of the packet filtering you need to know the difference between the packet filtering firewall which is a stateless firewall versus state so one small suggestion i can give you here is the thin line difference between the stateful and stateless is all about maintaining the information about the connection so stateful maintain the information about the connection whereas a stateless doesn't maintain any kind of a connection so for that reason we need to create all kind of a rule for both side 
But yes, if you're looking for a high level inspection and you want to configure any device on the border of the network for high level filtering, as a security consultant, we recommend to install the packet filtering firewall because if you go for the too much configuration firewall, it impacts the performance. Because when we're talking about the network security architecture, it is always driven by the business versus security requirement, risk versus business requirement. So that kind of an understanding is required in domain four. Along with that, then we basically move to the different type of cables. It's very important for you to know the different type of cable like fiber optic twisted pair coaxial cable. One important advice is fiber optic cable is provide the better protection than twisted pair cable in terms of EMI. If you get a question on which media is basically most effective for EMI protection, the answer is fiber optic cable. But if the question was specifically talking about uh, which media is basically provide the EMI, EMI protection with the strong physical shield, then answer is coaxial cable. So you need to know the different type of fiber optic cable. You need to know the different type of coaxial cable. I'm not talking about the standard. I'm just saying thin and thick coaxial cable, then fiber optic, we have a three category. And then twisted pair is two types, shield and unshield. You don't need to know the each and every standards of each and every cable. So that is not required. Next thing we talk about the VoIP, V-O-I-P. So VoIP is basically using a packet switching technology and that technology is basically used to encapsulate my voice over the IP network. In VoIP, you must be familiar with the different type of protocols and you must know for your exam. Example like SIP, Session Initiation Protocol to establish the session. RTP used to carry the data, RTP. Okay, Remote Transfer Protocol. So RTP, you need to know that. RTP default sending a data in a plain text. So we use SRTP. SRTP. Along with that, we also have H.323. They're using a UDP protocol. So you must be familiar with the VoIP protocols. Then you need to know about the MPLS, which provide the traffic re-engineering. They have a two type of routers, LER and LSR. So you must know about LER and LSR. Then we talk about, uh, then we have a next topic uh, about the basic understanding of the collision domain and broadcast domain. So that is also required then you must know the difference between the bgp and rip on a very high level then you must know about the icmp versus igmp icmp works on the layer 3 of the osa model then slowly and gradually we move toward the wireless security in wireless security uh, you must be aware about the different type of security standards starting with the wep where we use rc4 and the key size is 64 bit in which 40 bit is the key and 24 bit is the iv value one limitation with WEP is that it has a limitation of IV. After every 5,000 packets, the IV basically repeat. So that is why WEP is not considered as a secure one. Then we have a next one, which is called as a WPA. WPA basically doesn't require any kind of a hardware upgrade. WPA is basically looking for the key size of 128 using a same algorithm, which is called RC4, and has the key size up to 80 bit and 48 bit is the IV. But WPA2 was upgraded with the hardware solutions and along with that, they use the AES algorithm with a key size of 128. Things was not changed here. WPA2 is introduced with the enterprise edition, which is integrated with the EAP and RADIUS. That is why WPA2 enterprise is considered as a most scalable solution. Now we have a WPA3 as per the CISSP new slavers and the key size is 192 with the AES algorithm. AES algorithm. So, these are the security standards. You must be familiar with that. Along with that, we're going to discuss about uh, another important thing is a different type of ports we have in the transport layer. It's very important for you to know the different type of ports we have in a transport layer, like FEFermal port, E, P, H, E, M, E, R, A, L. I'm sorry if I pronounce wrong. FEFermal port, then uh, register ports. So that is also another important thing. Then you need to know the TLS versus SSL. The thin line difference between the TLS and SSL is the mutual authentication and the TLS offer mutual authentication. Then another important thing is called as the IPsec. IPsec in which you must know the thin line difference between the AH and ESP, which offer AH offer authenticity and integrity, where the ESP include the AH and along with that it offer confidentiality. But if you talk about on an individual level, AH offer only authenticity, integrity and ESP independently offer only confidentiality. They use one encryption which is called AES. Along with that, they also work with the two modes, transport mode and tunnel mode. So you must know about the transport mode and tunnel mode. 
then we basically and you need to know which one is more secure i'm not going to tell you then we have a key management also in the ipsec which is very important isakmp isakmp which include your ike in oakley so sorry ike which is include your isakmp and oakley so that is also very important for you to understand then another important thing is called as a vpn virtual private network come with a three connection pptp microsoft support with a default encryption called mppe using a rc4 algorithm pptp one challenge is that it doesn't work with a layer 2 then we basically introduce the L2TP. L2TP address the layer 2 flaw where they can use over the layer 2 connections, which is introduced by Cisco. Default L2TP is not having any kind of encryption. So they have rely on the IPsec for that reason. They have rely on the IPsec for the reason. See why the PPTP was introduced because whatever the uh, telecom device we have, they understand only PP, PPP protocol. And our IP based system doesn't understand PPP. To make them understand PP, uh, PPP packet we encapsulate through the PPTP because our band band is basically built on the telecom devices so that is why PPTP come into the picture but PPTP as you know they have a limitation that's why we introduce the L2TP so Cisco proprietary basically introduced the L2TP but default does not have an encryption so he has to rely on the IPsec for the encryption then we have a SSL VPN one thing remember SSL VPN doesn't demand any kind of a configuration okay so the companies can use SSL VPN uh, seamlessly without installing any kind of a thing, softwares and all that. Along with that, you must know the difference between the radius and TACAS. Okay, radius and TACAS. So TACAS plus is far better than radius because radius sending the password in a secret value, but username sending in the plain text and radius using a UDP protocol. Whereas the TACAS plus basically use TCP and it also secure the connections. So first was introduced TACAS, which is from a Cisco. Then Radius understand the limitation of a TACAS. They introduced their version Radius as an open source solution, which is work on the UDP. Then we introduced a TACAS plus, which address the limitation of a Radius. And now the opposite of Radius as an open source, we have a diameter. Another thing which you need to know from the exam perspective is the EAP protocols. And there is a one video I made on this authentication protocol also. You can type prob authentication in YouTube, you will get that video. It highly recommend you to watch that video, not because it's my video, but it might be helpful for your CSSP exam. So EAP extensible authentication protocol is another important solution we have. It's a framework which come with the multiple version. It started with the EAP leap where the password based authentication carry forward. Then we introduce a certificate base, which is called as a EAP TLS. But problem with the EAP TLS, both side, we need to install the certificate client and server side. Then we introduce the EAP TTLS, sorry, EAP, uh, then we introduce a PEAP, which say, okay, you don't need to install any kind of a certificate. Then we introduce the EAP TTLS. So these are the versions we have. So you need to know the difference between the leap, which is a password base, EAP uh, TLS, then EAP TTLS and PEAP. Then uh, another important thing was introduced like um, SDN. You need to have a very good understanding of SDN. What is the role of a control plane? What is the role of an application plane? What is the role of a data plane? There is a one video I made on YouTube. You can just tap SDN prob. You will get my whiteboard presentation. It is very important for you to review that video. Along with that, you need to know the micro segmentation and ultimate goal of introducing a micro segmentation is to reduce the breach. Then you need to have a very good understanding of the attacks. It's very important for you to understand the attacks, especially Smurf, Fraggle attack, DOS, DDoS attacks, then DNS spoofing. Okay, DNSSEC is a countermeasure by which we can able to restrict the dynamic updates, which offer the integrity and authenticity. Along with that, you need to have a very good understanding of MITM attacks and their countermeasures. And it is very important for you to understand about the SMTP relay. Okay, and the SMTP relay mean any domain mail can be sent through any server as any SMTP server. So I found one server and I used mentioned in a form called uh, prub at uh, ibm.com and to prub at ibm.com so that mail server can able to send my ibm emails from that server that is possible so that is called as an open mail relay so hackers use this technique to hide their identity when they're sending a threatening emails and all that so dmark spf records are the most countermeasures we have another important thing which i would like to cover here is uh, you know uh, 
there are some videos are there to understand domain for professor messer video professor messer video is there uh, which can be useful my sdn video is there which can be useful one more important topic is there is cdn content distribution network ultimate goal of the cdn is to improve the latency it mean improve mean enhance the latency and but big, one biggest concern with cdn is using is called as a regulatory issue because data is diversified across the multiple locations so as a as a domain for this is the important thing that you must know and if you find this video useful do share in your comment box and i'm working on the domain 5 and do motivate by sharing this youtube video with your friends might be this video can be helpful for those aspirants thank you bye take care